Okay, so let's see if your algebra skills are strong enough to solve this equation. Now, the great thing about this problem is that even if you only know some basic math and a little bit of algebra, you can actually get pretty close to the right answer. Okay, so here is the problem. We have 2 to the x power is equal to 12, and we're trying to solve this equation for x. But uh, we kind of have a clue here. And that is 2 to the second power is equal to 4. And 2 to the third power, that's equal to 8. So 2 to the what power is equal to 12. All right, so this is the problem. Feel free to use your calculator. But if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you're frustrated with math, or if you really want to understand the subject, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so once again, here is our problem. So we know that 2 to the second power is 4 and 2 to the third power is 8. So 2 to the what power is 12? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the right answer. Uh, the answer is x is approximately 3.584. So 2 to the 3.584 uh, power is going to be pretty close to 12. All right, so that is the correct answer. And if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally lost. Well, don't be too sad because it's possible that you haven't uh, studied this in school. Okay, for those of you that have taken some algebra, uh, what we're talking about here is generally not taught in courses like Algebra 1. So if you've taken an algebra course, like a one-year algebra course, a first year or an introduction to algebra type of course, well, you're not going to uh, generally learn how to solve these type of equations in that course. These type of equations are generally taught, or how to solve these type of equations are taught in courses like Algebra 2 or College Algebra. All right, but uh, again, I indicated that you could use some logic and some basic math to actually get pretty close to the right answer. And for those of you that haven't taken uh, this level of math, well, stick around. I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this. Is not, this is not going to be that difficult. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. So let's uh, take a look at our problem again. And we're trying to determine 2 to the what power is equal to 12. But we know that 2 to the second power is 4. But what does this mean? Well, that means 2 times 2. That's equal to 4. And 2 to the third power means 2 times 2 times 2. Well, that is equal to 8. So if you didn't know any better, you might just kind of like study the patterns here. You're like, well, let's see. That's going 4 to 8, 8 to 12. So we're kind of increasing by 4, right? These values are increasing by 4. And you might be looking at these exponents. We're like, all right, well, 2 to 3. So when I increased by 1 on the exponent, it increased this number by 4. So maybe we need to increase the exponent by 1. So maybe we should go from 3 to 4. So maybe 2 to the 4th gets us to uh, 12. Now, that's logical. Unfortunately, 2 to the 4th power is not 12. All right, so 2 to the 4th power is what? Well, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 4 times 4, or 16. All right, now, we could kind of look at the problem this way, though. So if you understand why 2 to the 2nd power is 4 and 2 to the 3rd power is 8, well, you'll know that 2 to the 4th power is 16. So that's not the answer. But uh, what we can do here is, again, study the pattern. So we were going from 4 to 8, so we increased by 4. And then 8 to 12, we're increasing by 4 again. And then 12 to 16, we're increasing by 4. So here, when we look at our powers, or our exponents, we're going from 2 to 3, and then 3 to 4, right? But um, if we go to 4, we go too far, right? Because 2 to the third power is 8. Kind of think of it this way if we're doing like a trial and error. 2 to the what power is uh, uh, 12, right? So this is the equation we're trying to solve. So we can just test some numbers. So if we put in 3, well, that's 8. That's not enough. 
but if we put in 4, that's 2 to the 4th, that's 16, that's too much. So maybe the correct answer is somewhere between 3 and 4 in terms of the exponent. So because we're kind of like right in the middle, maybe the exponent here is uh, 3.5, right? Maybe it's just right exactly between 3 and 4. Well, we can test that, okay? We could be like, all right, well, 2 to the 3.5 power. Well, if you put this into your calculator, you're going to get 11.31, uh, which is pretty close to 12. But in order to get it really close to 12, maybe we need to add something to this decimal, maybe like 3.6. And, of course, we could test uh, these values. So this is what I was talking about, that you could, you know, just with some trial and error, get pretty close to the right answer. All right, now before we continue, let's just uh, make sure you understand how to use your calculator and do this. So if you have a scientific calculator or some other calculator, you'll want to look for these buttons right here, like an upside down V. This is called a caret or something like an X to the Y or a Y to the X. These are how we evaluate powers in our calculator, okay, so or on our calculator. So let's go ahead and just do this right here. This is a very common button. This is called the caret function, but they all mean the same thing. So we're going to type in our base first, which would be 2. So we'll type that into our calculator, and then we're going to type in one of these buttons. So I'll type in the caret button. Again, if you don't have this, look for these other functions. Now we have the exponent 3.5. Always use parentheses when you're typing in your exponent. So parentheses 3.5 and parentheses, and then hit the equal sign and you should get something around, uh, uh, somewhere around, or a decimal, excuse me, around 11.31. All right, so it's important to know how to use your calculator, and you're gonna need your calculator to solve this equation. So if you don't have a calculator, no big deal, but to, for those of you that have to understand this stuff, make sure you understand how to use your calculator. Okay, so here again is our problem. So you, we could, use trial and error and get pretty close to the right answer but unfortunately you know we want to have the confidence that we solve this problem exactly all right so what type of equation is this well this type of equation in algebra is called an exponential equation so when you have a power like two to the third power this little number in the top right is called the exponent this bottom number is called the base the entire thing is a power so when you have an equation where the variable or the unknown value is in the exponent location, we're going to call this thing an exponential equation. All right, now this is different than if we uh, replace the x and the 2. In other words, if we switch these and uh, we have x to the second power is equal to 12. So this is not an exponential equation because the unknown value is this x. This is what we call a quadratic equation. And to solve this is very easy. All we have to do is take the square root of both sides. Okay, so these type of equations right here, you would learn in like a first year algebra course, like algebra one. But uh, exponential equations are typically taught, again, in courses like algebra two, college algebra, pre-calculus. But this is not that difficult. And uh, for those of you that never learned this, well, I'm gonna show you this right now. And uh, again, if you have your calculators, um, you know, or if you have a calculator, you know, I think uh, you may want to break it out so you can kind of follow along. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. But uh, before we do that, let's get into this, and that is having you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Now, here is the deal. Every time I post a video like this, I want to try to reach as many people as possible. That is the math teacher in me. So uh, the more students I have to teach, well, the happier I am. And the only way I can reach people on YouTube is to actually get people to support this channel and hit that subscribe button. So my channel is all about encouraging people to stick with math and try to teach it in a clear and understandable and interesting way. But I definitely need your support to continue to reach uh, people. And again, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification so you can get my latest videos. I pretty much post uh, videos every day. Now, if you need additional help with what we're talking about here, exponential equations, and I'm going to get into something called logarithms, well, check out, again, my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And for, uh, for those of you that need to really learn this stuff, check out my Algebra 2 course or my Pre-Calculus course. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. 
And don't be, uh, you know, afraid like, oh my goodness, he's talking about pre-calculus algebra two. This is not going to be that difficult. All right, so the first thing that we want to recognize, again, is that we have an exponential equation. So in algebra, when you have an exponential equation, we're going to uh, use something called logarithms. So exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of one another. But, uh, you know, oftentimes in algebra, a big part of knowing what to do is identifying what type of equation you have. So again, this is an exponential equation. This is a quadratic equation. This is a radical equation. So you need to know what type of equation you are dealing with. Okay, so when you see an exponential equation, generally you're going to be using logarithms to solve it. So I'm going to show you um, how to do this in just one second. And if you see a logarithmic equation, you're going to be using exponents to solve them, right? Again, exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of one another. Okay, now some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's fine and dandy, but I don't even know what this LOG thing means. Well, let me go ahead and give you a basic uh, description or basic lesson on logarithms, right? Then we'll get into how to solve this equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the left-hand side right here. We're going to focus on this stuff, and then I'll explain the logarithm stuff here in just one second. So here is like a basic exponential equation. So 2 to the third power is equal to 8, right? So we already talked about that. And we know the respective parts of this exponential equation, right? So 2 is the base, 3 over here is the exponent, and the answer is 8, all right? So I want you to kind of keep that in mind, the base, the exponent, and the answer. So every exponential equation we can write as a logarithm, okay? But here is the pattern we're going to follow. So it's going to be LOG. So the little number down here in the bottom is the base. So whatever we have as the base, we're going to write as that little number right there. Then next is uh, the answer, or A, okay? And then we're going to have equal the exponent. So basically, we just kind of have to follow this little uh, uh, formula, if you will, and put things in the right position. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So 2 to the third power is equivalent to the logarithm log. Okay, again, what comes uh, in, uh, next in this logarithm? This is the base. So this is log base 2, right? So here again is our base. It's base 2. Then we're going to have our answer. Our answer is 8, okay? And then lastly, we're going to have the exponent, and the exponent is 3. Okay, so from a uh, mathematic standpoint, uh, 2 to the third power, that's equal to 8, but this is also equivalent to log base 2, 8, and that is equal to 3. Okay, so logarithms are tremendously important, and here is a lovely little saying to help you remember this. So log uh, bacon, oops, I didn't want to do that. You're saying, what are you talking about bacon, Mr. Two Math Man? Well, I'll tell you in just one second, but uh, it's log uh, bacon and eggs, all right? bacon and eggs. You know, these little memory uh, mnemonic uh, sayings really do help you out. So when you think about a logarithm, uh, logarithms, think about bacon and eggs, right? So bacon and eggs, base, answer, exponent. Okay, so that is uh, a logarithm. Again, every logarithm can be expressed as a power, and every power or every exponential equation can be expressed as a logarithm. Okay, so we're going to be using these buttons on your calculator. You want to look for uh, the LOG button or the LN button. Now, the LOG button is what we call the common logarithm button. It's LOG or log base 10. And this button, LN, is log base E. All right, so base E. E is a very, very important number in mathematics. But unless you have an exponential equation that has its base as E, typically you're not going to use LN, um, uh, where you're only going to use LN for these type of equations, right? For all other exponential equations, you're going to use a log base 10, but you could, if you wanted to, actually use ln. Okay, so if you were ever wondering, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, I was always curious what these uh, buttons me, uh, meant or mean on my calculator, log and ln. Well, there you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this to uh, work and solve this uh, exponential equation. All right, so we're going to follow a, a procedure here and it's not that difficult. All right, now what I want you to realize is the following. Okay, look, you can see here, I'll explain this in just one second. Here I have log 12. Now you could just go into your calculator and type in log 12. 
you're going to uh, see some number, right? Some uh, likely a decimal. So log of a number, if we type it into your calculator, it's just going to be some other number. So you got, need to kind of keep that in mind when we're solving these exponential equations, right? So just remember, log of a number is some actual value that we can get on our calculators. Okay, so 2 to the x is equal to 12. So the first thing that we're going to do to solve this exponential equation is take the log of both sides, right? So we're going to L put LOG in front of both of these things right here. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is take this exponent variable x and drop it in front of the uh, log 2, okay? Now, why can you do that? Well, this is called a property of logarithms. Logarithms, excuse me. It's just a rule that allows us to take the exponent and write it in front of the logarithm. Now, look right here. We have log 2. Now, this is just a number. And log 12, this is just another number. So let's just use a kind of simple example here. If I have x times some number, I'm going to make up an easy number like 3, and that's equal to some other number like 12. Well, this is just a basic algebraic equation. So x3 is equal to 12. Well, when we have x times 3, well, we always put the number in front of the x, right? So we don't write it x3. We write this as 3x. But I'm pretty sure that most of you could solve this basic algebra equation, 3x is equal to 12, right? So all we have to do here is divide both sides of the equation by 3. Well, that's basically all we need to do right here. Again, these are numbers. Now, at this step, you don't want to go into your calculator and turn these into decimals, right? Don't do that yet. We're going to do that at the very end. But uh, let's go and do this right now. So to solve for x, again, these are just values, right? So to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by log 2, all right? That's log base 10, uh, 2. So we have x is equal to log 12 divided by log 2. Now go into your calculator and do log 12 divided by log 2, and you're going to get this decimal right here, something around 3.584. Now, if we kind of go back to um, our kind of trial and error um, thinking, let me go back to this part of the problem. We were kind of guessing here. We're like, all right, well, uh, we have 3, we have 4, so 12 is right in the middle between um, 8 and 16, so maybe like 2 to the 3.5 is a good guess. And if you recall, that got us to 11.31, uh, uh, 11 okay? However, if you're kind of like, you know, using uh, trial and, uh, and uh, just kind of testing method, if you will, just testing different values, you'd be like, well, we're not quite at 12, so maybe I need to increase this decimal to like 3.6. Well, when you do that, you're going to see you're going to go a little bit, you know, more than 12. So you just kind of keep adjusting it, and eventually you would get pretty close to a decimal of 3.584. But, of course, this is the exact, well, this is the exact approximation. We can get more uh, precise by getting uh, more uh, digits here. But anyways, this is how you solve a logarithmic, or excuse me, an exponential equation using logarithms. Okay, now a lot of you might be saying, boy, Mr. D2 Math Man, that is quite confusing. Well, again, you know, uh, don't let this notation, you know, uh, things like uh, the LOG button or the LN button, you know, bother you. Now, in other words, if, just because you don't know something, if you've never seen something before, doesn't mean that it's going to be so complex that you can't understand it. But, of course, you need to kind of build up and, you know, take it one step at a time. So if you've never taken, like, a first-year algebra course, well, you need to learn those type of equations first and then move on to exponential equations. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.